Welcome, boys and girls. Today, we're going to learn about the Ring of Fire. It's a story of volcanoes, earthquakes, and a burning ring of fire. Okay, so it won't really be a ring, and it's not technically on fire, but it's still pretty interesting, trust me. To start with, let me ask you a question. What if we plotted every known volcanic eruption on a map of the world? Let's see what that looks like. But before we start, I'm gonna move our map, like so. And you'll see soon why we do that. So we begin with the oldest eruption on record at the Smithsonian, from roughly 13,000 years ago in what is now Chile. And as we move through time, you can see volcanic eruptions all over the world, in New Zealand, Asia, Africa, in the middle of the Pacific and Atlantic Oceans, and even some eruptions in Antarctica. If we were to trace where a majority of these volcanic eruptions have occurred, a pattern quickly emerges. And this, my friends, is the Ring of Fire. Now, as I said earlier, it's not quite a ring. It looks more like a misshapen horseshoe. And it's not quite on fire, although a lot of hot lava has flown through this area. But doesn't Ring of Fire just sound much cooler than misshapen horseshoe of volcanic lava flow? So Ring of Fire it is. But just how many volcanoes have erupted in the Ring of Fire? To find out, let's go to our friend Sally the Sloth, who lives in the forests of South America. I bet she's seen an eruption or two. Uh, Sally? Sally? Sally! Hmm? What? Why did you wake me? I'm so sleepy. Sally, look around you. What? Ugh. Did I sleep through another eruption? Not again. Sally, while you're awake, will you please tell us about volcanoes and earthquakes in the Ring of Fire? Oh, sure. Why not? It's not like I can go anywhere for a while. I've lived in the Ring of Fire for a few years now, so I know a bit about volcanoes and earthquakes. But scientists have records dating back to almost 13,000 years ago. They have recorded almost 10,000 eruptions all over the world, and nearly 8 out of 10 have been right here in the Ring of Fire. And if we're talking about the really big eruptions, it's even more. Nearly 9 out of 10 of those have happened here. Did you know that earthquakes and volcanoes are very closely related? It's true. More than two-thirds of big earthquakes, and I mean earthquakes that can damage buildings, have happened right here in the Ring of Fire. In fact, in the last 50 years, we have had 23 earthquakes measuring over 8. And all 23 have been here. It's been a little shaky. Let me tell you, the Ring of Fire is no joke when it comes to earthquakes and volcanoes. Now, how do I get out of here? Don't worry, Sally. I'll send out a chopper. See you soon. To find out what causes earthquakes and volcanoes, we have to look inside the Earth. Now, if you pop the Earth open, you see the different layers inside. The outermost layer, which we live on, is called the crust. Below the crust is the mantle, and below that are the outer core and the inner core. Now, let's take a closer look. If we were to take the world's longest thermometer, which I just invented right now, and start sticking it deep inside the Earth so we can see how hot it gets, what we would find is that the outermost layer, the crust, has an average temperature on the outside of a nice comfy 60 degrees, but as you start getting to the bottom where the crust meets the mantle, the temperature rises to about 400 degrees. And just as a point of reference, water boils at 212 degrees, so we're already getting pretty warm here. The mantle is where it really starts to heat up, from 400 degrees at the top part all the way to 7,000 degrees at the bottom, where the mantle meets the outer core. And to give you an idea of how hot that is, a Neapolitan pizza, which is a pizza from Italy, cooks at about 900 degrees, and iron melts at 2,800 degrees. Going further down, the outer core gets as hot as 9,000 degrees, 
and the inner core gets even hotter going up to 13,000 degrees. Now, what'll really blow your mind is that the temperature at the surface of the sun is a little under 10,000 degrees. So the inner core of the earth is actually hotter than the surface of the sun. Okay, so what does all of this have to do with volcanoes? The answer lies in something called tectonic plates. Tectonic plates is how the surface of the earth is divided and they go as deep as the top portion of the mantle. You can think of the tectonic plates as floating puzzle pieces like so that are held together as part of the earth's surface but sometimes rub up against each other with some very interesting results. And the way in which tectonic plates rub against each other really matters. One of these ways is called subduction. When an ocean plate collides with a continental plate, the ocean plate subducts or gets pushed under the continental plate. And as the plate subducts, it heats up, it releases water, which then creates magma pools. And this magma rises to the Earth's surface to create volcanoes. Here, you see a divergent boundary where two tectonic plates are moving away from each other. Now, this creates a gap in the Earth's crust and magma quickly rises up to fill the gap. And you guessed it, creates a volcano. There are also areas within tectonic plates that are called hotspots, which are places where plumes of magma just well up from the mantle and create volcanoes. Now, these don't require plate interaction at all. They can just occur anywhere within a plate. So like it or not, you can't escape a volcano. And finally, when two tectonic plates slide against each other, they create a transform boundary, which leads to earthquakes. And like volcanoes, earthquakes can also occur within plates where there are faults or weak points. Now let's get back to the map. And we'll move our map to the east again, and we'll start drawing the tectonic plates. Now as we draw these plates, you start to see how some plates are next to other plates, which are next to other plates still. And at the center of it all is this large Pacific plate, which rubs up against many other plates. And where all of these plates collide with the Pacific plate and with each other, we see, you guessed it, the Ring of Fire. 